Planning Commission for August 18, 2016 to order. Can I get a roll call for members, please? Dirk Bowden. Here. Alan Bucknam. Present. Emery Dorsey. Here. Donna Kimsey. Here. Janet Leo. Here. Scott Ohm. Here. Steve Timms. Here. Amanda Weaver. Here. The next order in the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Is there a motion to approve the order of the agenda? Mr. Chair, I uh, move to approve the order of the agenda. Second. I'll second that. Any discussion? Call for a vote. Motion passed eight to zero. Is there a motion to approve the order of the minutes for July 21st, 2016? I'll uh, move to approve the minutes from July 21st. I second that. Is there any discussion? Call for a vote. Motion passed five to zero with three ex abstaining. Okay, this is the time for any person to speak on any subject not appearing on the agenda. I'm not seeing anyone in the audience. Nobody, nobody signed up. That would conclude the public forum. Let's move to the public hearing. Case number ZOA-16-02, an ordinance amending article one, two, and six of chapter 26 of the Wheat Ridge Code of Laws concerning regulation of self-storage facilities. I open the public and I would like to ask for the staff report. Sure, thank you. Tonight we are here to consider case number ZOA-16-02, a zoning ordinance amendment to amend portions of chapter 26, articles one, two, and six um, of chapter 26 of the Wheat Ridge Code of Laws. All publication requirements have been met, but therefore Planning Commission has jurisdiction to hear this case. Um, you all may remember um, a few months ago we held a study session regarding potential zoning ordinance changes um, related to self-storage facilities. A little bit of background, again, just for the benefit of potentially anyone listening and for the record. We have two existing facilities within the city. Both are on the northern edge, one on West 44th near Ward, and the other near um, Harlan um, along 48th Avenue. They've been in existence since the early 80s, 1983 and 1985, I believe. And again, this um, subject arose from Community Development Department receiving three applications for new self-storage facilities within a matter of months. Um, at this point, most of them have when, been their um, kind of way through the system. Marshall Street self-storage, you all heard in March, was approved. Storrel self-storage has again been continued. However, um, we believe it will be considered a public hearing this coming Monday on August 22nd. So that one is still um, an outstanding land use case. And then the Parfit Street storage was denied by Planning Commission on May 19th. So at that time, we raised a number of issues. Um, the first one was architectural standards. Um, as we indicated at the study session, um, we would address these concerns through the architectural and site design manual. That manual has been updated and is now the one that we are working on. And it, um, within that manual, how we've addressed it is essentially we have stated that exterior access self-storage facilities, which are the ones with the exterior garage doors, would need to comply with the light industrial, heavy commercial architectural standards, and that the interior access, the re, um, more of the multi-story type facility would need to conform to the retail and commercial, so definitely the higher architectural standards for the interior access. So that item, um, in staff's opinion, has been resolved. 
So essentially, we are left with the areas within the zoning code that would need to be amended in order to um, accommodate the remainder of the goals. So the goals for the ordinance were to establish buffers, to remove this um, use from the C2 use chart, and then staff um, also had a discussion internally about updating the definition, and we can go into that. So again, the first item within the zoning ordinance is the inclusion of two buffers or distance requirements, as we call them in the land use code, for new facilities. So the first one would be, um, what's proposed would be a half mile buffer from any existing self-storage facility for any new self-storage facility. So this map was not in your packet, but is included on the dais. And that would be um, essentially the thicker yellow line represents a half mile buffer um, from existing facilities. Now one thing to note is this buffer requirement would apply independent of jurisdictional boundaries. So potentially um, this restriction would actually look much greater in reality. Um, we don't have an absolute list of where all those self-storage facilities are. We have a rough idea of where they are, but should a new application come in, um, we'll certainly have to work to make sure that we're working off the latest information um, for other jurisdictional self-storage facilities. Um, we do know that there's a number of them in Arvada and Adams County and Jefferson County north of um, our city boundary. So the second buffer that's proposed is one that stemmed from Planning Commission's discussion. And um, what is shown on the map are one quarter mile buffers from fixed guideway um, transit stations. So essentially these are the new B-line transit stops. So on your map you can see these two, they are the hatch, yellow hatch, that's a quarter mile distance. One of the transit stop, the Ward Road Station, is within the city limits of Wheat Ridge. The other, the Arvada Ridge Station, is beyond the city of Wheat Ridge, but it does, that buffer would apply to certain properties within the city. So those are the two buffers that are proposed within the ordinance. The next one, as we discussed during the study session, is to remove this land use from the C2 zone district. Again, these are generally smaller parcels. They're along higher visibility corridors, and the majority of these parcels are already developed. It's just unlikely that we would see this use proposed there. And finally, um, staff recommends updating the definition. The current definition for this land use is mini warehouse. The use chart references mini warehouse for inside storage. Um, the more common term, as self-storage. Um, I think from a today's standpoint, this is the more self-explanatory use. This is how the public refers to it. It would be more generally understood by the public should a land use application come forth with this use. So again, we're recommending that change. We're also revising the definition to include interior access facilities. The way the definition is worded that says with, I can't remember exactly how it's phrased, um, in the ordinance, my apologies, I don't have the flip to it. It says with at grade loadings, we've revised it to state which may have at grade loading. So this would include then those interior access, multi-story type facilities. So the definition itself um, could have either or be applied. Um, we're not differentiating it by adding another definition. So with that, um, I would turn it over to you for any comments or questions. I know Scott Ohm has indicated that he has a few questions, um, but I'll take a seat and you can let me know your thoughts. Do any of the commissioners have any questions? Commissioner Bogdan. Just want to reiterate, reiterate or clarify. <clears throat> it sounds like the, uh, the, the one question I did have related to uh, whether or not these buffers would uh, be applied from uh, extra uh, jurisdictional uh, storage facilities, like for example, in Aurora and Denver. It sounds like that's the case. That is the case. Okay. This language um, for how these distance buffer um, language is used is essentially the same language that we use for other um, distance requirements within the code. So the phrasing for this particular language is consistent throughout. Okay. So we borrowed it from, I believe it's marijuana facilities. Okay, thank you. Any other commissioners have any questions? The only comment I had was just on the uh, on that last two pages where it says uh, section two 
um, under A, and it, mm -hmm. I know the, the wording had crossed out mini warehouse in section one, but in section two, it says of any existing mini warehouse facility. I, I, I That's think a good, good catch. That'll get changed to self storage, okay. And then the, and then the other question I had was just on the, um, uh, on section one where it said, uh, where each unit is rented or may be sold as condominium storage space. Is that the, I mean, would there, I, I guess my question is, is there any other scenario where storage space would be sold where it wouldn't be for a condo? That, that's the only, my only question is why, if we should have condominium language in there. Sure, you know, that's a carryover from the previous definition and condominium itself is defined in our code and I can read that quickly. Um, a building or group of buildings in which units are owned individually and the structure, common areas, and facilities are owned by all of the owners on a proportional undivided basis or by, you know, potentially a separate owner. So I think that that meets the intent of what this would be. So someone could purchase an individual unit without, um, you know, acquiring necessarily ownership of all the units. So it's just a term for ownership. Okay. Ownership, type of ownership. Okay. Are there any other questions? And one more, one more question. Um, obviously, we don't have any anybody here tonight to ask questions or give any comment. But uh, did did city staff uh, receive any comments from landowners, self storage facility operators, anything like that when you guys were working this up? Um, not directly related to this ordinance. We haven't received any. Although when the Marshall Street self storage application was being processed, you know, we did have conversations with that applicant, kind of offline, um, and he indicated that our code probably could use some updating. Um, you know, that that some of these updates we didn't talk specifically about these would bring us more in line with other municipalities. So. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions for staff? Um. There are no citizens signed up to speak, so I will close the public hearing, um, the citizens forum. If there are no other questions, I would entertain a motion. I move to recommend approval of the proposed ordinance uh, amending articles one, two, and Six of Chapter 26 of the Wheat Ridge Code of Laws concerning regulation of self storage facilities. Second. I'll second that. Any discussion? Call for a vote. Motion carried eight to zero. Okay. Are there any other items? Justice public hearing ever. Um, we anticipate having a planning commission hearing or meeting on September 1st. Is that correct, Tammy? I believe that's the next meeting. Um, I believe you'll be considering a subdivision application that night. So we'll, we'll uh, let you know for certain. But plan on attending. That's all we have. Um, one question I did have was, uh, uh, I know in one of the past cases we had concerning the uh, TUD and rezoning and wanting to build they, they didn't want to build very high because of the cost constraints of mm -hmm. concrete and steel. The Hans Ranch rezone application? Yeah, I think that's what it was. Um, and I, I just, I don't know if anybody's familiar with, with this, but it's, uh, I can't remember what the first part of it is, but it's CLT and, and it's basically a, a laminate timber system. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but I guess it's new construction that they're using for um, skyscrapers. And they're basically taking timber and they, they cross uh, stack them and they put glue in them and compress it and uh, it's cheaper than than the concrete and steel and it's actually quite strong this is something that's very kind of I guess I'd say kind of cutting edge kind of new but it's um it's supposed to be cheaper I don't know if the city would you know we entertain. have adopted the 2012 building code international building code so I would imagine if it's yeah I don't know if it's in that or not contemplated to meet those requirements then you know I don't know that's interesting though but okay. Oh, thanks. If there are no other items or questions, is there a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. Second. Call for a vote. Motion passed eight to zero. <laughs>